presentation. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular city council meeting here in the chambers tonight. Um, I'll call this meeting to order. May I have the roll call, please? Councilmember Elliott? Here. Councilmember Garcia? Here. Councilmember Sandal? Here. Councilmember Fitzhenry? Here. Mayor Gotell? Here. No one for the open floor. Would everybody please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask for the approval of the minutes of the Special City Council Work Session of July 9th, 2013, and the regular City Council meeting of July 9th, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, tonight, we have two presentations, and we will start with the Hennepin County Sheriff Rick Stanick. Uh, presentation of a commendation to a Ridgefield police officer, Orlando Zavala, for events on December 18th, 2012. Would you please come up and start the presentation? That'd be great. Well, Madam Mayor, uh, Council Members, uh, good evening. My name is Rich Stanick, uh, Hennepin County Sheriff. Um, Madam Mayor, members, if it's okay with you, I just ask Officer Zavala to, uh, to come on up and please. stand right here. It's about him and you should get a chance to take a look at them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Madam Mayor and uh, members, I've had a chance as a sheriff of this great county to, uh, to go across the county meeting with a number of different city councils and elected officials. I give them an update about the working relationships between your sheriff's office and your local uh, police department. And like I said, before I, before I get to that part, though, um, I'd like to tell you about what happened back on December 18, 2012, which we found uh, very commendable. Now, we weren't able to do this, uh, I think, several months ago. The officer was, uh, was out of country, but uh, he's back, and I promised when I had a chance to come out and greet the uh, council that I would uh, try and get this done. So, hence tonight. Now, you already know, uh, Madam Mayor and members, that on December 18, 2012, a teenage girl was attempting to end her own life by jumping off the Portland Avenue Bridge over Highway 62. Uh, Hennepin County Sheriff's Deputy Cramble and Richfield Police Officer Orlando Zabala were the first to arrive on scene. Now, they saw the girl on the bridge outside of the railing. As she was leaning forward and only using one hand to hold on to the railing and appeared moments away from letting go. You know, this is not an easy, uh, it's not an easy job that we do. It's not an easy choice that we make, uh, seeing humanity out there each and every day. But as Deputy Cramble and Officer Zabala carefully approached her, she repositioned herself into a sitting position on the bridge, on the edge of the bridge, and began to lean forward without holding on to anything. Not only, you know, God knows what happens in those next few moments, whether she lets go, whether she jumps, uh, whether she decides not to. At any rate, uh, the officer and the deputy have a, a job to do, and they do their jobs uh, very well. Deputy Cramble and Officer Zabala rush forward, Officer Zabala stuck his arms through the rail and grabbed the teenager, while Deputy Cramble grabbed her arms and handcuffed them to the rail. Uh, again, they have to improvise with what they have and what they have available before fire and EMS and other resources arrive on scene. So they were very resourceful that evening, and luckily for us. Additional law enforcement personnel arrived and were able to bring her safely onto the bridge to waiting uh, paramedics. Uh, officer, I want to thank you for your bravery. I want to thank you on behalf of the residents of this county. I know uh, the mayor and the council will thank you on the behalf of uh, the Richfield residents, but it's a big deal. And uh, it's not easy when you're out there each and every day. I understand you finished a shift just earlier tonight as well, and you worked uh, very hard. We appreciate it. And on behalf of uh, the residents of Hennepin County, thank you. I have something for you, officer. And you know, Madam Mayor, I don't know how you want to do this. If you want me just to uh, give it to him, if you want to Please come and it. join, it's up to you. Please read it. Please okay. read it for us. It says that um, this is from the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office on behalf of myself. It's an award of merit. It's awarded to Officer Orlando Zabala of the Richfield Police Department. It says briefly, in recognition of your bravery and quick actions in saving the life of a suicidal person on December 18, 2012, and then signed by myself. Thank you. 
You know, it's so wonderful when we get the chance to promote some of the wonderful things that happen in our community and some of the wonderful staff that we have at the city here. Thank you. Um, and we have another presentation uh, regarding an update on the countywide strategic initiatives. And we all got our wonderful booklets here, reading material for us. And I'm sure we'll have a few extras here at City Hall if citizens want to come by and, and take a look at this. Good. Um, Madam Mayor, members, if I can uh, continue. Does this, is this what I use, this thing? Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, as I said, I get a, oh, let's go to the next one. Uh, must be a secret to it, huh? Just that one right there? Oh, the wheel. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> we got her. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it is. Well, no wonder why. Um, you have it on a. Oh, did you already load it up? Do you have it on? A, uh, do you have it on a thumb drive? <laughs> there, there, there it is. There See, it's right there. There we go. <laughs> Down on the, uh, the oh, down. Yep. All right. Oh, you have to go down. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, technical difficulties, but we're back on track. Uh, Madam Mayor, members, uh, thank you again. As I said, I get a chance to uh, talk to a number of the uh, the cities and the elected officials around the county. I just wanted to give you a quick update about where we're at and what we do in partnership with the uh, Richfield Police Department. I will say right off the start that uh, uh, Chief Sandell. Uh, your deputy chief, uh, Henthorne, and others that we work with out here, the men and women of the Richfield Police Department, we have a very strong working relationship. Um, you know, it's not easy doing the job day in and day out, but uh, these guys make it a lot easier. Um, with me tonight is Major Daryl Huggett. Uh, I think you've had a chance to meet uh, Major Huggett over the last several weeks. Uh, Daryl runs our Enforcement Services Division and our 911 Dispatch, 911 Dispatch Communications. All right. Uh-oh. All right, good, good. Well, here's a couple uh, interesting facts about the uh, Sheriff's Office. Uh, one, we were incorporated in 1852. That's 161 years of uh, proud history and service to the residents of this county. There have been 27 sheriffs since 1852. Uh, the last three sheriffs took up 70 years of service. Uh, sheriff Ed Ryan, Sheriff Don Omont, and Sheriff McGowan, I'd venture to say, uh, Officer Fitzhenry, you worked under which one? You worked with a couple of them, right? You worked with uh, Omont as a, what, 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 as a police officer. officer. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, Hennepin County, it's, uh, like I said, there are 45 local communities. There are 37 law enforcement agencies in this county, including the uh, Sheriff's Office and the State Patrol. There are five federal law enforcement agencies that have uh, jurisdiction here. Additionally, we've got uh, interaction with two U.S. Senators, two U.S. Congressmen, uh, 33 state representatives, 18 state senators, and one county board of commissioners, the seven of them that we work with uh, day in and day out. Uh, the sheriff's office uh, provides eight distinct lines of business, Madam Mayor and members. So in other words, when you see the dark blue uniforms of Richfield Police Department or the light brown uniforms from the sheriff's office or maroon from the state patrol or the green from the Department of Natural Resources or light blue from Minneapolis, uh, you know, everybody's got a different function uh, countywide. The Sheriff's Office provides eight distinct lines of business. Traditionally, most of the police departments in the county provide anywhere from two to three to four lines of business. We are a service provider. So we are the backdrop for law enforcement in the county. Uh, the local, if you have a local police department in place like you do in Richfield, you decide what level of service you want to provide to the residents through your property tax dollars. Whatever you don't provide, the Sheriff's Office provides that primary service, and for those that you do provide, we provide the supplemental or the backup service at the request of the local police chief or the local elected officials, and between the two, it works out uh, quite well. The uh, Hennepin County Sheriff's Office, uh, we've got about, uh, we had 817 full-time employees. We're down to 744. We also have about 300 volunteers and special deputies. Our volunteers or special deputies would be like your police reserves out here, our special deputies have some limited statutory authority um, by state statute, much like what would be a uh, sheriff's posse of, uh, of old times. And they work uh, countywide. There are about 125 of them that work in four distinct uh, units. Our organizational structure, much like uh, local police departments, 
I've got a chief deputy who is akin to the chief of police. Uh, he works uh, day to day. Four majors, including uh, Major Huggett, who handle the uh, eight different uh, divisions or lines of business under four separate uh, bureaus in the sheriff's office. Uh, we run uh, the jail in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, we book about 40,000 people a year into that jail. You see here Richfield uh, booked, I think, uh, 679 people into the jail during 2012. That's a, it's a pretty high number. About 30% of our inmates are considered mentally ill, either treated or untreated. About 70% are repeat offenders. So we, a lot, we see a lot of the same people coming and going day in and day out. Court security, we have eight different courthouses throughout the county. Uh, the three outer division courts at Southdale and Brookdale and Ridgedale. We also have uh, the Twin Towers downtown at the Hennepin County Government Center itself, 24 floors on each side. When you come through, you'll see weapon screening. You'll see the deputies manning those checkpoints. You'll see the deputies up in the courtrooms, whether it's downtown, out in the Dales, family court, juvenile court, city hall, or in the public safety facility jail itself. Uh, they do a lot of uh, business with the residents of the uh, county. Enforcement Services Division that Major Huggett uh, runs located out in Brooklyn Park on the border between Maple Grove and Brooklyn Park. Our patrol unit does warrants and civil processes. Most of these are mandated under state statute, seven or eight lines of business. The one line of business that's not mandated is our crime lab. Our Special Operations Unit much like what a patrol unit would be in the local police departments. The uh, SWAT team is our emergency services unit, weapons of mass destruction, tactical unit, critical infrastructure patrols. You can imagine what that would entail with Homeland Security and some of the new challenges that we have as law enforcement agencies across this county. In 2012, uh, Hennepin County Sheriff's Office provides patrol resources out in Richfield. Um, and certainly our canine unit, we've got 11 canines countywide, our transport unit and water patrol. The water patrol is one of those little known things, but we've got 104 lakes and three major rivers that flow through the county. And they stay busy every day, especially on nice uh, evenings like this. Warrants and uh, civil process. Just last week, we had a uh, warrant sweep, what we call Operation Summer Splash, as it may be. And we served 300 domestic assault warrants across this county to bring offenders to justice and hold them accountable for their crimes. At any one time, we've got about 18,000 warrants countywide. You know, we serve warrants across the county and all the cities. So what you see every day is our sheriff's deputies uh, traversing back and forth across the county, whether warrant process, civil process, answering 911 calls, some in marked squads, some in unmarked squads. It really, you know, you have to uh, know what uh, you're looking for. And then we serve civil process as well, 378 of them in 2012 in the city of Ridgefield. Like I said, water patrol. And we've got a number of resources that we work with out on our lakes and our waterways. Our dive team are very good at uh, recovering evidence and uh, working on other uh, issues like that. We spend a vast majority of our time on education and prevention, whether it's on the waterways, life jackets, etc. Every year we've got a dozen plus drownings. These numbers are no different. Uh, Ten uh, drownings in 2012, 15 near drownings. We've had uh, three, if not more, I think we've had seven already this year. We had three in the winter, another four or so, and we're halfway through the summer. Uh, it's something that every single one of those are preventable. It's just a matter of reaching out to the public and helping to educate them. And 911 dispatch, as you know, we do not provide dispatch services for the city of Richfield, but we do provide for 36 other communities across the county. 20 of those are fire departments, 23 police departments, we are currently building a new dispatch facility in Golden Valley. The one we currently have is about 65 years old. The county board saw fit to replace that with a state-of-the-art $34 million upgraded uh, communications facility, dispatch and communications. Now keep in mind, and I've had a chance to talk with some of you individually, uh, we run not just a dispatch facility, but communications. All of the radios, whether handheld by your police, your fire, in the radios, in the trucks, in the squads, uh, come through the sheriff's office. Every time you press the button, it starts, or every time you uh, unpress the button, uh, the transmission stops there. And that's why that is a, a communications facility. It'll be built out in the uh, city of Plymouth uh, on the site of the uh, county workhouse where the old women's cottage used to be next to uh, Parker's Lake. And we expect to be in there uh, approximately one year from now and to take operational control of it October, November, 
of 2014. We can't just shut down operations, so we'll have to transition ever so easily between July, uh, August, September, October into the new uh, facility, but it'll be state-of-the-art, uh, very nice. Uh, our crime lab, like I said, out of our eight lines of business, the one line of business that's not mandated under state law for the elected sheriff is the crime lab. We are internationally accredited. We're one of two crime lab systems operating in the state of Minnesota. The other one is owned by the state of Minnesota and provides services to the 86 other counties. Seneca County is fortunate to have our own crime lab to serve the residents of this uh, county. Last year, Richfield Police Department uh, had 87 crime lab cases. Our investigative unit, again, works uh, countywide. Richfield participates with the Sheriff's Office in the Violent Offender Task Force. A good thing. It makes a difference in terms of violent crime reductions uh, countywide. You can see some of these numbers from last year. 331 arrests, over 200 weapons uh, seized, 270 plus search warrants. Uh, they work hand in hand with our information sharing and analysis unit, which really provides uh, data and information out to the patrol officers as soon as practical. Uh, it used to be, you know, you had a photo of a suspect from a robbery of a business, we would have to fax it out. It would be a black and white fax. Good luck trying to figure out who that might be. Today we can send it directly to their handheld iPhone, Blackberry, right to the squad car, you name it. Technology has changed dramatically in the last uh, 10 years. Our professional standards uh, division, personnel, training, background, human resources, we're a fairly large agency, the largest sheriff's office in the upper Midwest and one of the largest in the country. So if we're going to provide training like we are the last couple days and over the next few months, active shooter training, whatever it might be, we invite local law enforcement agencies to participate with us and benefit from the 2,700 plus police officers in this county being trained to a similar or same standard or same level, which is important because no one city or police department, not the sheriff's office, not Richfield, not our federal agencies or an island out there, they rely on each other each and every day for backup and services when an event or a crisis <laughs> happens. And then a little bit about uh, sheriff's office up in the upper left-hand corner. We uh, work hard on prescription drug, both education, prevention, collection, uh, to get them out of the hands of the residents. Those are expired, unneeded. In the lower left, uh, our deputies patrol downtown Minneapolis, as well as a number of communities. And lower left is uh, safe zones in downtown Minneapolis. The lower right is about uh, heroin prevention, meeting with North Memorial and Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. And of course, the upper right is about uh, water safety and prevention, particularly with the different immigrant communities, particularly in apartments, in those places where you wouldn't normally think. You might think it's safe to venture out into the pool, but honestly, Daryl will tell you, most of our drownings happen at swimming pools, hot tubs, uh, something indoor where you wouldn't normally uh, think of that. People are on guard when they go to the beach, not so much when they're back at apartment complexes or public swimming pools. National Night Out's coming up August 6th. I know that you'll be participating as we will across this county. We're looking forward to it. Last thing is really about uh, violent crime. Violent crime reduction in this county is down 37% over the last six years. That is a good thing for the residents of Richfield, both your residents, your businesses. It is not easy to do, but thanks to partnerships with local law enforcement agencies and our federal partners, thanks to the initiatives by some of the police chiefs across the county, they get it. And then you have to have the support of your local elected officials, which is where the five of you come in. If you didn't support your police and fire, this county would be in a world of hurt, but you do, and therefore you see these violent crime reductions countywide. Nope. This one's just a uh, summary of uh, Richfield by the numbers, so to speak. Jail booking, 679. Civil processes, crime lab cases, detective, 49 warrants served out here in Richfield. And like I said, I think uh, Richfield had 74 violent crimes in 2012. And they're about 4920 across the uh, county, so you get a snapshot of Richfield as it compares to the county. Same thing with property crimes, 935 versus nearly 40,000 countywide. So Richfield does a good job day to day. Like I said, uh, Madam Mayor and members, we enjoy our working relationship with the men and women and the chief of the Richfield Police Department. I'm happy to take questions if you like or not. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. No, to take questions if, count, if uh, council members want to say, um so what this, what, any questions about this? Comments? Just a, Please. I'll just make a comment. Um, thank you for coming. I think that was very informative. I know when I met with you um, and visited the dispatch center that I 
heard some of that information, and I really hadn't ever focused on what one of the varieties of things that the Sheriff's Office does. So thank you for your good work, and thanks for cooperating with our great officers. Yeah, my pleasure. You know, and I think it's, oh, go ahead. I was going to ask you, were you sheriff when we had that disaster and the 35W bridge yes. collapse? Yeah, um, <laughs> Madam Mayor and uh, Council Members, I was. I was about seven months into the uh, job. Mm -hmm. uh, August 1st of uh, 2007, about 6.04 p.m., just a few days away from our sixth uh, anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, think about, we had 140 local law enforcement agencies and federal partners who responded that evening. Tragically, 145 people injured, 13 people died, mm -hmm. and probably the biggest uh, natural disaster or man-made disaster, depending on how you look at it, in the state of Minnesota. A lot of things happen. Because I remember that, uh, you know, that you, the sheriff's office was in the water, and that I thought, well, gee whiz, I didn't know that that was one of their areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very, very impressed. You did a tremendous job. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, well, I think ev anyone and everyone that responded just, were just heroes. Yeah, I appreciate that. Madam Mayor and Council Members, uh, yeah, I, I get asked this question a lot, and I, I was referring to it earlier, whether you wear a blue uniform or brown uniform, light blue, maroon. You know, how do you know in a situation like that whether a plane drops out of the sky, you live fairly close to the airport out here, or a bridge collapses over a major river, or catastrophic crash on the highway, fire, whatever it might be. How do you know who has jurisdiction? And, you know, what you need to know at the end of the day, the residents of your city, the residents of the county, the people who are coming and going through, the business owners, is that law enforcement is seamless. We train, exercise, prepare incessantly, hoping that things like that never occur, but they do. In terms of the bridge collapse, you keep in mind that that was a state highway uh, under the jurisdiction of the Minnesota State Patrol. It's in the city of the first class, the city of Minneapolis. They've got a first class fire department and police department in terms of response. And then you've also got the sheriff's office overlaid on top of that with the resources, the equipment, the emergency management and preparedness that we do, and the waterways are under the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office. So you got three big entities working together. Again, at the end of the day, it should be seamless to the residents, and I hope it was. It certainly was. Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you for dropping off this information. I actually do peruse these things like this, believe it or not. Um, it was also great to have the overview for the citizens. You would be surprised. Uh, Sheriff, how many people actually watch this or watch the reruns of this and then say something to one of us council members somewhere or, or ask a question or call city manager or something. So um, it's highly watched and people really do think this. So I, I invite you to come back again. And not if you just have this, if you want, you have other information. I think it's fascinating some of the work that you're doing on the violent crime and on gang violence and stuff and how we're teaming together. And it might be interesting just to, to have an update on that throughout, the, you know, half a year or something like that too find out what we could be doing more, what we could tell the neighbors and stuff, what we could do, be doing more to help, you know, our police officers and the sheriff on attacking those kinds of things. Sure, Madam Mayor, members, I'd be happy to work with your local police chief on something like that, maybe in a few months to help further educate and update uh, the residents and the council. Keep in mind that, um, you know, again, we uh, get a chance to come out and talk to a number of the elected officials across the county. Uh, we want you to be proud of the law enforcement services that your citizens pay for through their property tax dollars, whether countywide, whether citywide. Now, you have a full service law enforcement agency. Some of those services are provided locally. The rest of those services are provided by the sheriff's office. But again, it should be seamless to the residents themselves. Thank you for coming here tonight. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor and Council Thanks. Members. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> At this time, we have a presentation by David Gepner about the Three Rivers Park District and the Penn Fest coming up. So if you just want to give a few minutes for those exiting so that you can, we can not be disturbed. And how do we get the technical people out here to? <laughs> okay, here we go again. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yep, here we go, here we go. We've got somebody coming. Oh, you got it. Okay, thanks. I'm, I'm David Gepner. I've been given the opportunity to provide you some information on 
a major city event coming up on September 15th, and, and that's PennFest. And, and this is an event where Penn Avenue is closed all the way from 75th Street to the Crosstown, so people can come out and enjoy a nice Sunday summer afternoon. Uh, they can bike, they can rollerblade, they can, mothers can push their strollers. The idea behind the event is, is to get out and get some exercise. And in that um, vein, the, the street is closed for, for a, about its mile and a half length. And all kinds of good things happen up and down the street. Traditionally, uh, at the north end, uh, people come and some come only for the root beer floats that, that uh, <laughs> Lunds provides. Uh, this year, the event is going to be a little bit more challenged in that uh, Penn Avenue Bridge is closed. In fact, I think it's closed starting this weekend, and it'll be closed <laughs> until October 10th, and it'll be uh, closed during this event. So we're encouraging people who come and come by car to, to park at the south end uh, in the Hopefully the, the church at 75th Street uh, will allow the use of their lot and maybe even will have some type of an event that is going to uh, encourage people to um, stop and, and uh, visit their location. There's more emphasis this year placed on um, events throughout the entire street, not just have it be at the north end by the uh, commercial area. Uh, th this year, uh, in addition to the farmer's market that uh, uh, was at the event last year will, will be a flea market. So a, a lot of things are, are going to be happening up, up and down the street. Uh, uh, there, there are a number of uh, athletic organizations that, that um, have events and, and put on performances. Uh, certainly, there, there's going to be food, there's going to be activities. One of the highlights last year was the BMX bikers that Penn Cycle sponsored in front of their location, and everybody's going to want to come out and see them. Your uh, elected representatives will be walking up and down the street. There'll be uh, uh, bicycles that will be available for, uh, uh, for your use. Uh, there'll be pedicabs for those of you who get to one end and, and want to uh, hire a ride back to the other. Uh, all kinds of great things happening, and uh, you know I want to sh thank the sheriff for his um, uh, introduction earlier, adding credibility to it by having <laughs> my slides up during during uh, his time. Uh, uh, Gordon Hansen, the individual who puts together our website, uh, uh, took some time this noon uh, in instead of uh, his job to to create a, a slideshow that, that talks about some of the good things that are happening on the street and more importantly uh, depicting uh, last year's successful event uh, according to the police who are no longer here mm -hmm. we had seven thousand people out on the streets and, and uh, uh, Penn Avenue was jammed and there were a lot of things going on one of the things that we want to emphasize more than than we have in the past is that uh, uh, neighbors in the residential area get out and do something on their front lawn, invite friends over, uh, have a garage sale, uh, sell lemonade, so that, that in, in that manner, they too can be a part of the event uh, and, and um, have an offset to the fact that, that their uh, street is, is a little bit blocked for that day. One of the things that, that um, uh, happens at, at the north end that's always been popular is the, is the car show that Laura, uh, Laura Motto uh, puts on. So let's go through the slideshow. I, I tried to get the technical people to cue the music, and, and we haven't been able to uh, coordinate that. So you'll, you'll just have to uh, read along with me. Um, so last year, as I, as I indicated, there were a lot of people up and down the street, and it was jammed. And I'll show you a picture of all those folks uh, uh, here. Um, and some of the folks are blurry, but, but you know, it didn't have anything to do with the alcohol that was available at, at the bowling alley. <laughs> um, we, we got the, the business to participate. Uh, and on balloons always does a good job up at their end. Uh, if you bring the kids, uh, they, they do balloon tying. Um, we, we hired a number of musical venues, and, and there'll be more of those this year. Uh, so be sure to come and, and hear those. Here's a picture of the farmer's market. The, uh, uh, the police didn't get involved, uh, but the fire department did. Uh, and the, the Penn Avenue Fire Station um, is, um, is again, going to host 
uh, the firehouse where kids come up and, and put out the flames. Uh, the Arts Commission, uh, again, is doing, uh, uh, bring their pottery wheels so that the artistic youngsters and those folks in the community that, that have a bent for uh, throwing clay can, can do so. The, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a family-oriented event and um, uh, so, so that uh, we're encouraging families to bring their kids. There, there's two uh, dog venues on the street that will certainly have their animals out so that those of you with, with pets can, you know, bring your dog and uh, uh, make them part of the festivities. Here's, here's the uh, uh, depiction of, of the car show. Uh, there were, as I indicated, there were a lot of activities that, that were sports related, and, and here is um, uh, a uh, slide that depicts that. Uh, it's, it's coming on September 15th. It's the uh, second Sunday in September. It's from noon to five, and, and we want all you folks to show up. One of the things that might be of interest to, to you is to take the new 75th and 76th Street bikeway to get to Penn Avenue as a way of, of um, uh, arriving at, at the area without having to, to drive. After all, it's an event to encourage exercise and getting outdoors. I uh, thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation. That's wonderful. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for David. coming tonight. Yeah. Madam Mayor, I just wanted to say to, to Dave and that um, you know this is a group of just grassrooters and grassroots more, more grass than you think yes and 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 uh th that goes to show the power of uh, a group of citizens getting together to make things happen thank you and the businesses yeah okay thank you thanks, thanks. um the next is council discussion um it'll be hats off to uh hometown hits and council discussion i'll let uh council member garcia start oh thank you well first i wanted to um to let folks know that I guess we're gonna have a new editor for the Richfield Patch, and his name is James Sana. I believe that's the way you pronounce it. So uh, I think Caitlin um, Burgess. Uh, Burgess did just a wonderful job as a Richfield resident, grew up in Richfield. She's done a great job, and we welcome our new editor, and we hope that we can, you know, that he can get together with us and we can help him out as he uh, starts his new venture. And just let me say that Caitlin is not leaving. She will still be doing some, but she is moving up in the organization, which is Good. great to hear. That's even better news, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Madam Mayor, if I could introduce uh, some guests that we have in our family. Uh, Diego, por la salsa la cámara. This is the Rodriguez family. This is Diego, Ufelia. Isaura, and then there's two other younger kids, and they will, they're our, our guests for six weeks. Uh, we have a timeshare in Mataclan, and so we met them at Loaves and Fishes when they were here. This is a family that, uh, they're both teachers. She's the editor of, um, of a magazine, and he's a photographer, professional photographer, and he also, um, he, he, they, they just do a number of things. All their kids are involved in, in swimming, tennis. Uh, uh, Isaura has won national awards in um, you know, mathematics and, and history. And uh, it's a great family, and we're very pleased to have them uh, in Richfield. And uh, Diego, si quieres sentarte aquí, puedes tomar los fotos mejor. So. Anyway, so mm -hmm. please join me in welcoming them. Welcoming them. Hope you enjoy your stay in Richfield. It's a great place to come and vacation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Other things, Council Member? Uh, Council Member Ellie. I was just going to say this is an inside joke, but you must have been reminded of your first. Uh, First week in law school when the mayor called on you, I don't think you were ready. He said, what, me? Huh? <laughs> you got that look on your face that I'm not quite ready. You know, that was, and I remember it was Pinoyer v. Neff, the procedural posture. Oh. You're getting a little technical for us. Yes. I want to forget that stuff. Thank you. But, um, I just want to follow up on what uh, 
Dave had to say. Uh, one of the things about the open streets, I, I think that all of us were not only pleasantly but greatly surprised by the turnout last year and the amount of fun everybody had. I expect it to be everything and more than that this year. And I know that they're still looking for people to help out and you can both enjoy by participating, but also uh, enjoy just being exposed to all your neighbors and everything in Richfield. So if, if you're looking for something to do on September 15th, other than just visit, uh, I'm sure that they can find some, some work or some, some things you can assist us with. So um, look forward to seeing everybody out there on the 15th. Yeah. You know, one of the things they forgot to mention was the flea market. Yeah, well, they, no, you, you bl he? briefly mentioned that, okay. but there's okay. going to be a, quite a large flea market, and, yes. a, and flea markets have changed over the time. It's kind of like tattoos, which we'll be talking about <laughs> later tonight. Oh. They've become more vogue, and they've become upscale, and things are very different. Ooh, <laughs> I didn't know that. I, good, I saved my joke. Um, <laughs> so uh, so I'm, I'm uh, really excited about seeing that, too. But there are so many kids' activities there. The kids just love this. This is great, too, and lots of things for the adults to see. So. Council Member Sandoff. Thank you. I have a couple things to bring to everyone's attention. Um, coming up on uh, Saturday, August 3rd is the, I'm not sure the number, but it's probably over 10, um, the Urban Wildlands 5K and Half Marathon Race that starts at the um, Richfield Ice Arena, bright and early 7-ish in the morning on the mm -hmm. 3rd of August. Um, and they are not yet full, so if you haven't gotten your running gear organized and you haven't registered, you still can go online and do it. Um, and if you're not a runner but you want to get out and cheer the folks along, that's a great thing to do too, um, especially along the, the half marathon route because that's a that gets to be old, long, that's a long run. And they really appreciate it for when the people, the residents help with their water stops and uh, cheer on the runners as they go. And you can find the route online at the city website. The other thing to bring up is the um, National Night Out that's coming up Tuesday, August 6, 6 to 9. It's actually the Night to Unite is what we now call it. And if your block hasn't organized, it's probably not too late. Talk to your neighbors and call City Hall um, to get on the list. And then the third thing um, we could talk about now or not um, is my, we had an earlier discussion this evening about um, the Three Rivers Park District and wanting to encourage them to get their um, upgrades along 76th Street, which they do for all of their parks. And I'm wondering if the council is interested at this point or maybe at a, at a later meeting sending them a letter to suggest we'd like to have an unveiling of the very first kiosk that they normally do wayfinding along 75th somewhere, or 70, uh, 75th and Penn, preferably. Yeah. Um, to maybe have some kind of an unveiling ceremony and to recognize that we have a regional trail going through our city um, that isn't recognized yet, doesn't have... That's not going to be formally installed. It could at least be demonstrated there. Yeah, and yes. some kind of a ceremony. So I guess I would... I would support that. Support All right. Sure we can, so, I'll, I'll, so if the council is willing to do that, maybe we can have a letter sent to them from the entire council requesting that they have some recognition of the or unveiling or dedication or something yes. of the initial completion of the of our part of the trail. Okay. All right, and that's the end of my discussion. Council Member Fitzgerald. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd like to report that we had a uh, noise oversight committee on July 17th. Uh, that's the, uh, in fact, uh, those that are listening right now that are mobile, they might want to go right behind us. There's a... Uh, public input meeting right now behind us that the MAC is uh, having in Richfield. I believe it's till 9 p.m. tonight, uh, right behind the city council member, uh, city council chambers, and it gives you your opportunity to talk to MAC and discuss uh, your noise issues. Uh, we did elect new co-chairs at the Noise Oversight Committee. Uh, the, from the city side, if you want to call it that, Elizabeth Petchel from Mendota Heights was uh, elected as a co-chair, and then Jeff Hart, who was uh, one from previous, from Delta, he's a very good representative on the uh, what we call the business side, and that was uh, done, and then I did raise concern. We had a report that came out on a study on 30 left, 30 right, and there was an uh, issue about there was 9,000 some odd operations extra on 30 left, and I did mention in the meeting that we wanted to find out if the runway use plan was not in use or whatever. 
they'll give me an answer on that, but a lot of it might be the weather and destination. Uh, we've had a lot of strong winds coming out of the northwest, and when you look at that, it may make sense that they were using 30 left because of the south destinations and the strong winds that they couldn't use the south departure runway. Yeah. So I did raise questions on that, but uh, we'll, we'll get an answer on whether that was really wind related or what's going on over there. I had some concerns of them using Terminal 2 and it's just more convenient for the planes to take off on that runway and that, so, and they'll be looking at it. Well, I wanna thank you, you are our expert here, so let me ask you one of the questions on here. Is, is, is there any updates on the RNAV at all, where that's gonna move or go or? There were, we're supposed to get some more answers. I, I still think we're beyond 2015 or so before we see anything with RNAV. Uh, we are, as you know, uh, working with uh, Edina, who had requested stuff. Uh, we're gonna be their mentor, I think, and explain to those cities that don't understand what RNAV is, how it works, and how it would be beneficial, not only to Edina and to, you know, to Richfield so that they understand it. So I think it's more of an education piece mm -hmm. where you hear RNAV and everybody gets excited, oh, they're gonna do something else to make more noise, mm -hmm. when in reality, it's a safety issue and keeps them on track. Uh, as we had that uh, uh, little meeting with Mac and they explained to us, uh, even in the last uh, NOC meeting, that everybody can be on a 260 heading is what they give you off 30 left, 260 degrees. And they showed within, you know, a mile of Richfield, everything hits the target, you know, right, right at the fence, they call it, at 900 feet, have you mind. Mm -hmm. And then when it hits Edina, it was spread out over miles and miles, and they're at least 1,900 feet. And so what happens is they're all in the same heading. Mm -hmm. And the wind factor and just how fast the planes climb and when they can turn and how they turn is up to the pilot then. And where the RNAV would, uh, basically the pilot would get in the cockpit, take off, hit the RNAV button, and it would take him down that road precisely every time. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of our goal to uh, assure that they do that so we have a predicted path and it goes over areas where they've already had mitigation. So Yeah, well, I'm, and I want to thank staff because they've done some outreach to Edina as well. And I know that also made some calls to Burnsville as well. There's been some less participation by some of those cities and they're highly impacted and they were invited years ago and there's been staff changes and there's been political changes and it's nice to see if everybody can get back around the table so that we all have the same understanding. There's, there'd be a better way to solve problems that way. So it's nice to work together, thanks. So um, the only thing I have is that um, I know usually we get a notification from someone about National Night Out and when to get together. Um, I'm sure somebody will get that to us so we know when the meeting is because a lot of us, okay, get together and um, sometimes I carpool, sometimes I go with other people and we usually have goodie bags and stuff we go out and I know we get requests sometimes specifically from residents to, oh, can council members such and such stop at this house or something or the mayor or they want a fire truck or something. So if we could get that, that'd be great. Somebody just get us an email because I know I'll be out and about. And it's so nice because my neighborhood makes it the night after so that I can go to theirs too. So um, we don't get any of the posh stuff though or the prizes. Um, any other discussion items or anything? Okay. Um, I'll ask for uh, council ad, uh, approval of the agenda as it stands. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have the consent calendar. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, for those in the audience, both here and at, uh, at home, the consent calendar contains several separate items which are acted upon by the City Council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, all the individual items and their respective motions will also have been approved, and no further City Council action on those items will be necessary. Tonight there are um, about six items on the consent calendar, and we start off with item A, which is consideration of approval of rejecting all bids submitted for the water treatment plant soda ash feed system project. Item B is consideration of approval of accepting the bid minute tabulation and award of contract to Interstate Improvement Incorporated in the amount of $718,785 for the 77th Street Concrete Pavement Repair Project and authorize the city manager to approve contract changes provided it does not exceed $50,000. 
Item C is consideration of approval of accepting the bid minute tabulation and award of contract to Paulda and Sons Incorporated in the amount of $1,058,267.25 for the Richfield Parkway Connection Project and authorize the city manager to approve contract changes provided it does not exceed $50,000 and approve the hiring of WSB and Associates to perform the construction engineering services for the Richfield Parkway for a project fee not to exceed $139,761. Item D is consideration of approval of a two-year use and indemnification agreement between the City of Richfield and Tom Price for the use of 4,690 square foot strip of land along the edge of Lincoln Field. Item E is consideration of approval of resolution, rescinding resolution 10,793 uh, and modifying a post-employment health care savings plan for management employees. And finally, item F, consideration of approval of a resolution allowing the fire department to accept a $200 donation from Alaris Mortgage, which was donated in the names of two Richville residents. And that concludes tonight's consent calendar. I'll move the consent calendar. Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Council Member Elliott, you have the first. Thank you, Your Honor. This item calls for a public hearing in consideration of a resolution providing host approval for the issuance of tax exempt notes by the city of Lilydale for the benefit of Holy Angels. Um, the Academy of Holy Angels has proposed to refund two of their outstanding tax exempt notes and to finance the acquisition of various equipment at the school by issuing revenue notes through the city of Lilydale. The, tax, the two tax exempt notes to be refunded were originally issued by the city of Minneapolis and the city of Richfield. Holy Angels originally approached the city of Richfield for the issuance of the notes. However, the city of Richfield did not have the capacity to issue bank qualified notes for Holy Angels this year. Subsequently, the city of Lilydale agreed to issue the notes on behalf of Holy Angels. Because the project to be financed is located in the city of Richfield, prior to issuance of the notes by the city of Lilydale, the city of Richfield must hold a public hearing and provide host approval in order to satisfy state law and tax law requirements. Finally, the notes will not constitute a general or moral obligation to the city, Richfield, and will not be secured by the full faith and credit of taxing powers of the city of Richfield. In the event the project encounters financial difficulties, no assets or revenues of the city of Richfield will be available to pay the principal of or interest on the notes. Um, this time, uh, Mayor, I think we should call for the public hearing. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to come forward and speak? Anyone at all? Is this a public hearing? Move to close the hearing. Second. Uh, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? The public hearing is closed. With that, Your Honor, at this time, I would move to conduct or to close the public hearing and approve the attached resolution authorizing the city of Lilydale to issue tax exempt bonds on behalf of Holy Angels. A second. Any other discussion, Council? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Council Member Sandall. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this will also be a public hearing and a second reading of a transitory ordinance vacating a storm sewer easement at 6400 Lindale Avenue, which is the former Lindale Garden site. In 2008, the city replaced a storm sewer line that crosses the site property formerly occupied by the Lindale Garden Center. An easement for the new pipe has been included in the approved plat for the Lindale Gardens addition and the easement for the abandoned pipe is no longer necessary and therefore needs to be vacated. Uh, and we can do that under city ordinances, and so I think we could call for a public hearing. The public hearing is open. Would anyone like to come forward to speak on this item on the agenda? Anyone here to testify for the public hearing? Move to close, Your Honor. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? The public hearing is now closed. And with that, Your Honor, I'd like to move that we approve the transitory ordinance vacating the storm sewer easement at 6400 Lindale Avenue. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It's nice to see that project moving forward. Yes. Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Like always, you gave me the toughest one, but. Yes, yes, I I'll, I'll manage it. <laughs> 
Uh, this is the second reading of an ordinance amending the Richfield Code of Ordinances relating to tattoo, body piercing, body branding, and body painting services. It's now called body art. Um, the Richfield Code of Ordinances licenses establishments that provide the tattoo, body piercing, body branding, body painting services. Uh, and, you know, uh, and the new term for that is body art. In 2010, the state of Minnesota enacted a statute, Chapter 146B, that requires the established requires body art establishments and individual art technicians to be licensed through the state. Unless the city, unless the city in which the business is located has an ordinance that meets or exceeds, exceeds the requirements in state law. The city's current ordinance does not do that. Uh, it does not meet the standards or exceed the standards. And um, so, and the state of Minnesota has reviewed that ordinance and has made that clear to the city. Uh, it, it happened that Gray Dog Tattoo uh, came before the city and asked the city, um, um, you know, for a license. And being that the state indicated that that was not possible, um, the city then, uh, through its very capable um, city attorney uh, put together um, a new ordinance and, um, and now it does meet the standards as prescribed by the state statute and also meets the, um, and exceeds them in fact. Um, the city of Bloomington will be the ones that, prom that will perform the health and safety inspections. And um, I, so this um, ordinance is going to provide consistency and uniformity. And I also want to thank, you know, I've, I've read the ordinance because it kind of reminded me of a delete everything amendment. But I read the ordinance and you really did a really good job of, I mean, it's very, very clear, very, you know, um, decent reading, if you want to call legally stuff decent reading. <laughs> so um, I'd like to move that we approve the second reading of an ordinance relating to the regulation of body art establishments, amending section 630 of the Richfield City Code, and number two, adopt a resolution approving summary publication of said ordinance. Second. Any further discussion? I wanna know which tattoo you're gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is consideration of the purchase of new computer-aided dispatch records management software from Lotus for the Richfield 911 Dispatch Center in the amount of approximately $382,000. The City of Richfield must inform the Lotus Consortium on or before July 25th whether the City intends to purchase their new computer-aided dispatch records management software for Richfield's 911 Dispatch Center. While this approximately 382,000 purchasing decision is a standalone decision for the present time, this council action is a threshold decision as to whether the city of Richfield is to retain its own 911 dispatching operations or have Richfield dispatching provided through another entity. As council members are aware, the purchase of the new software would indicate that the city would intend to retain 911 dispatch and require a subsequent investment of $60,000 in the Viper phone system by the end of the year and another $400,000 in next gen 911 dispatching equipment by the end of 2015. If the city council does not approve the purchase of the new CAD RM, that's a record management software from Logis, it will necessitate the closing of the Ridgefield Dispatch by the end of 2014 at the latest due to the viability and support of the software and equipment currently in use. 
Moreover, if the city council decides not to retain dispatching service at Ridgefield, a decision to move to another provider should be made as quickly as possible. To that end, staff is recommending that the selection of an alternative service provider be made at the August 13th, 2013 city council meeting. This would allow for prompt planning for the future transition for Ridgefield to another entity. The city has three alternative dispatching options to consider <coughs> if the decision is made to conclude to conclude dispatching operations in Ridgefield. Those include Hennepin County, the City of Bloomington, and the City of Edina. A comparison of the costs and the services of each of the three was provided as a part of the Council member Memo number 57 issued on July 3rd, 2013. Subsequent to the July 9th, 2013 City Council work session, the City of Edina was contacted regarding the term of the proposed contract. The City of Edina indicated that there was no problem in proposing a longer contract term and would provide a four-year option. Bloomington was also contacted regarding the price of their proposal and to ascertain if those costs could be reduced to a more manageable number. There was no opportunity to reduce costs. The background, the city staff has presented the city council with information concerning the decisions to be made regarding the future of 911 dispatching for the city of Ridgefield. The city faces a number of capital expenditures total in excess of 750,000 that would be need to be made in order to retain dispatching <coughs> services. Three alternatives of choices have, have been available to the city. The council um, chooses not to retain local dispatching. The first such capital purchase decision must be made by the city by on July 23rd, 2013. So this is very timely. I know we had a lot of uh, discussion and we've had a lot of great input from citizens. I wanna thank those who have responded. Um, this, it's been great to hear from so many of you out there and I'm so glad people pay attention to so many of these great issues here right in Richfield and care about their city. Um, so I'm gonna make a motion and ask for a second so we can have some discussion. Um, I will ask for a motion to approve, to um, um, approve, uh, I guess I'll ask for it because we don't have a decision here to, and you can change this, to reject the purchase of the 911 dispatch software for the city of Richfield from Logis. Second. Discussion. Council. Yeah, um, this is very heartburn for me. Uh, we three years ago decided to build our dispatch center and we decided to support it at that time. And so it's very difficult for me to make a decision saying that, okay, we decided three years ago, we're gonna build the dispatch center, we're gonna have it, and we kind of agreed that at that time, at least I did, in HeartNet, that we would support it. And I guess I meant support it in every way, including continuing it. Um, so, I know there's a lot of fees involved. They weren't controlled by us. Uh, it was uh, hiccups by Premier Software, and they had to change vendors and stuff. But I really, with the pile of letters I got from the citizens and that, I guess, my, as myself, I would like us to continue that, and that's the way I'm gonna lean this evening. Uh, that decision may not go forward, and we'll have to go further, but, uh, Three years ago, I made that decision. We were going to support dispatch, and I'm not going to back down on that suggestion I made. So uh, I'm leaning toward ex, uh, purchasing the software. So. Council Member Sando? I think Edwina was. Edwina, well, do you want to weigh in next? I just want to, you know, I, I feel exactly what, what um, Council Member Fitzhendry feels, but Quite frankly, this is really the ugly, ugly truth is that we really <clears throat> have almost no choice. We just, we just, even all of us would rather have uh, the 911 dispatch here. There's no question about it. But like I said, the ugly truth is facing us and we have, we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that this city runs as well as as it can, and it's it might be with a heavy heart, but uh, I will support um, this this motion. Council member. Yeah, I, one thing I would like to say is, you know, I haven't, I don't have 
is longer term on the city council. Tom and I are the relative newcomers. And um, this is probably one of the tougher decisions that, that I've had to make in regards to my four and a half years here. And the one thing I want to say is um, there were decisions that were made that, that uh, created, or decisions that had to be made that created a lot of noise and a lot of pushback in, in the community, um, saying some things that may or may not have been unwarranted. I want to say in regards to this issue, we received uh, tons of emails, personal contacts, and I really appreciate the way everybody I talked to, everybody wrote to us, approached it. They were, they were professional. They laid out their position. They laid out their case. They, they articulated it well. And each one of them basically represented or, or, or stated to, to me in the same emails that were to the mayor and to the city council about they realized it was a tough decision and they laid it out. And I guess the way it was done made it even more difficult because nobody was yelling, nobody was screaming. Nobody was saying, you have to do this, you promised us this. Um, it, it, was, it was balanced, it was reasoned, and it made it even more difficult. Uh, what it comes down to, and I know it, it, it's, it's tough to acknowledge that, that money talks, and in this case, um, having sat through some of the budget meetings and looked at our capital expenditures over the next three to five years, and, and there, there are things that have to be done for the city in terms of long-term maintenance and everything else that are important. And, and there, there, there's a balancing act that goes into it, and there's been some proposals made, nothing's been finalized, but there's indications that, that there's alternatives we can explore that hopefully will preserve or be a continuation for, for some of our dispatchers that want to continue, it just won't be here. But, but the, the money situation is such that, that to really protect the trust that, that the constituents put in me in electing me to this office, I think I'm going to have to vote to reject the, the logis also. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Sando. Mm -hmm. um, I've been meeting and talking and listening to many, many people here about this issue because it is an important one. Um, obviously, the dispatchers have a concern. They're, they might be losing their jobs. The police and fire have concerns. They don't want to lose the good service they have. Um, and so I've been visiting the various dispatch centers. Um, I did a ride along last Saturday night to hear some perspectives from the police department. I'd have gone on a run with the fire department, but my time was limited. Um, the uh, you know, and so this is not an easy decision for any of us up here. We know that the dispatch service we currently have provides excellent service. We know that um, both our police and fire um, really appreciate what they do. Um, for me, it does come down to the dollars. Um, having visited the other services, you know, I it, it it'll be different. It won't be the same. But if we end up um, not choosing to spend the dollars on the software. Tonight, it means we have to be somewhere else. So we're going to have to look at what works the best for our for our officers and our fire department. Um, so, I, so I am going to vote not to spend the money on logis. Um, the other thing is, this is now the third time I'm aware of that this has been looked at. This is not a new issue. My concern is, no matter what we do, it may be coming back again because the software keeps changing, systems get more have more costs to them, the technology keeps changing, and you have to stay on top of it, and that all costs money. Um, and so I, I, it's, not a, it's not a decision that's going to go away, in my, um, in my opinion. And, but I don't think we ought to be investing, that the city of Richfield at this point can afford to invest in additional software, um, which means we will be looking for an alternative place to be. So. And I just want to say that um, I've had a lot of conversations with uh, Councilmember Fitzhenry, and I want to thank you too because you've educated me a great deal on the whole systems. Um, I was the one who actually chose to look at the rejection of this, and, and the reason has nothing to do with the fact of the actual dollars right before us at the moment. Um, because could we find a way to do that? Probably. Uh, my concern is what's going to happen even while we're still not on the council some years down the line when technology just keeps getting more and more expensive. And if we went with another entity now, what could we actually gain in the future that we won't have? Because we won't have the ability to maybe afford those other types of technologies that are going to come. And it's not going to get better. It's only going to get higher. And we can't do it. I don't see us doing it. I see us moving on to something else where we have a, a partner that can help us do this. 
And uh, I, I don't think, as the cities dwindle and leave, they're, they're re leaving for the same reasons we are, um, because they see that they need to look at this more regionally or with other partners, partner cities next to them. And that's kind of how I see it as well, too. So I think we have to make that decision. We are not a large enough entity like a Minneapolis to be able to afford the progressive higher costs that this will move forward with. Other staff, anybody has anything else? I know this is a tough decision. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. One opposed. <clears throat> the motion carries. Um, city manager? Um, yeah, that brings us to the city manager report. That was probably the hardest um, thing yeah. I worked on in my term as city manager. So I don't have anything else. Okay. Um, can I just say um, before we, we uh, leave this, though, that we now have a, a very big decision before us. And I know there were still a lot of questions between council about where we end up from here. And I hope that we take some time to go back and look at those and get some questions to staff and such and, and that staff will give us some study time to pull this together if we've got to move something. This is a really big decision and we need to make the right decision the first time here as we move forward. So I'm really cognizant of that. Madam Mayor, Please. someone brought to my attention because I mentioned that our fire chief, um, you know, he spoke very passionately last time and um, you know about the half a minute of one minute how it might be a life-saving half a minute or one minute uh, and someone s asked me if it was possible that the fire department go to the to the Edina and and the the police um, go to Hennepin County and that's just something I'm throwing out there not for discussion but just to, to um, you know, just to see if, if, if anyone's had that train of thought. Thank you. Madam Mayor, members of the council, that's something we can take a look at and get back to council very shortly. I, I just think it's imperative that, um, that you do whatever homework you're gonna do on this as quickly as you can, um, because the entities that are out there, when it comes to the, to the city uh, potential partners, um, they would need to, they need to have an answer pretty quickly. Um, and not only that, but it would be a good idea, I, th I think for everybody's sake to, to get some closure to it. So it would be, um, it certainly would be my goal that we would have an answer as to where we're going on, on August 13th. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, we don't really have a scheduled council meeting uh, for the second, that second meeting in August has been canceled. So it makes it even more important, I think, that we do that on 13th. <laughs> Um, we'll put together an answer to that question. Uh, I certainly would encourage you, to, if you haven't, to visit the various centers, uh, the various partners that we could be looking at. And um, by all means, give me any question that you, that you have. Uh, and if you want to contact any one of the, the partners, uh, contact them. They, they would expect that. And um, all three of them are, um, are very available and uh, would, uh, will make every effort to answer any question or uh, give you any tours you want or, or do whatever you whatever you like okay council member I, I, I would just suggest and I think you you mentioned it in your memo that uh, the city of Bloomington and the county are fairly static in terms of what it's going to cost and what they're offering but the city of Edina predicated their contract on based on Golden Valley and they didn't change it they just put it back in front of us and you indicated that they were reworking the contract or putting it together to represent what what they would expect from yeah. us. So I, the sooner I, you can get that, the sooner I'll have, I'll have the paperwork I need to do I my have, homework. I have it, I'll, I'll okay. just get it out, to, I'll scan it in and get it okay. to council tomorrow. Basically, they're, they're basically giving us this, the same price with just a, uh, with just a, in, just an escalator to, care, to cover whatever cost increases they have for their employees that they had, which, which we would have, we'd have the same thing here. I mean, if, if they're giving their employees a 3% increase like we would have given their, you know, they're saying that they would pass that cost on to us, that would only make sense. Okay. But I'll get that to everybody. Yeah, I, I, I have trouble with the analysis of that based on the disparity in population between 20,000 and 34.7 and how, how the, the contract and the, the services provided to Golden Valley are going to come at the same price to us. Uh, you have the actual contract or just a proposal? 
Oh, no, I have a proposal, but I mean, that's, that's very firm. I have, a, I have it in writing. And I've talked to the Dyna City Manager a couple of different times, uh, including this morning. All right. Uh, and that's firm. Okay. Maybe we'll okay. want some detail to the background to see what, how they figure their numbers and see if we're comfortable. I know we went back and calculated Bloomington's, too, to try to look at it with a, you know, we've, we know what the numbers are. Yeah. And make sure that it's covered. I think that would make... I know I, 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 the disparities of the two contracts are one of the things that, that have been a, a point here. So maybe we could just get some a little analysis would be very helpful. Anything you have? Sure. That would be helpful. Thank you. Anything else? I'm sure I'll have questions as I go through. Um, claims and payroll. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Um, seeing no further business, I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, Council. Thank you for that card, by the way. Huh? Thank you for the Bloomington card. Yeah, you're gonna. Uh, one thing you asked them when you when I was there. Mm -hmm. Did you know realize Bloomington's backup facility is Richfield? Richfield's backup facility. So. They're really, that's where their biggest fit.